have to light my candle. Ooh. Hi, everybody. I'm lighting my candle here. Yes, I am. I'm lighting my candles. I'm in a, um, you know what, that light's too bright, I think, for what I want to do. Yeah, I think that's better. I'm just going to do a short little video tonight about something. Oh, one of my viewers asked me to do quite a while back. I never got around to it, so I'm going to now. But, oh, sorry, baby girl. My jolly baby. Um, this is kind of, this is about the supernatural. I don't know how many of you are into that. Mm, but I'm going to do this simply because of some things that I have experienced in my life. And I know other people have experienced as well. Um, I have had experiences in which I don't know, you know what happened or what it was about. Uh, I will give you one example. Um, when I was still married, this is going back many years, I think 1994 is when it was, we moved into a house. It was a rental home, and our kids were young, and the first night that we moved in, you know, we were unloading a few things from our boxes that we needed for the night. Uh, my husband and I, my then husband and I were in our bedroom, and we were, you know, putting sheets on the bed to get ready for the night, to go to bed. We were exhausted from moving, and at that time, you know, it was, uh, it had those, you know, hanging lights from the ceiling that were so popular for so long. Uh, the on chains. Well, there was one right above the bed. And anyway, we were busy making the bed together, and all of a sudden we noticed <laughs> the light just kind of went back and forth. Well, of course, we just sort of stopped and stared at each other, like, "Did you just see that?" You know. And, and he looked at me, and he was like, "Okay, what was that?" And I thought. I don't know, you know, I was so tired from moving, so I just sort of said, I, I don't know, we continued making the bed. Um, then, that very same light went up and down, okay, you know, you got a picture of those old chains that they used to hang from, it went up and down a little. That's when we kind of started to freak out, because that was not swaying, like maybe who knows what would cause a light to sway but it actually went up and down. So then we panicked a little, looked at each other and thought, oh my God, what the, what the hell was that? <laughs> you know, we, we really didn't know what to think. We just kind of stood there for a little bit scared, really scared thinking, trying to comprehend what we just saw. So, you know, from exhaustion, we were like, okay, we're, we're going to bed. I, I can't, we couldn't cope with anything like that. Got the kids to bed. Um, so we're laying in bed, you know, kind of thinking about what we just saw. Lights are out, everything, you know, we were exhausted. And all of a sudden we hear, because, you know, connected to our bedroom was, you know, the ba master bathroom. And we're laying in bed like this, for instance, the bathroom was over here, uh, off to the side. And as we're laying there kind of talking about what occurred, all of a sudden we hear the water come on in the sink. I looked at him, I was like, what is that? And he goes, it sounds like the water. So again, we were kind of shocked. We just kind of laid there listening. So he finally got up, walks into the bathroom and he goes, holy shit, the water in the sink is turned on. So he turned it off, laid back down. We were then kind of really panicking, panicking, thinking, are we losing it? What is going on here? As we lay there thinking about that incident, lo and behold, the toilet flushes. 
So then we laid there and looked at each other like, oh my God, we're losing our mind. What is, ha what is happening here? Okay, we, we, it was hard for us to even think. We were so exhausted from the move. The kids, you know how kids, when you're moving, they're all hyper and crazy, and we were so exhausted. We finally just went to sleep, okay? It was, it was just too much. Well, we you know, got up as normal, went about our, he took some time off from work so we could get settled from the move, what have you. Well, then the next night, the TV for our bedroom was on the ground, okay? It was on, or on, the, on the floor, on the carpet, in the bedroom. And I decided to plug it in, you know, um, turn it on for a little bit. Well, my, one of my sons came in to sit with me on the end of the bed, and the TV was right there. And I was just sort of watching it, you know, kind of taking a breather break. And lo and behold, the TV started going on and off. Well, it didn't just go on and off like a power problem. We actually saw the button on the TV going in and out. My sons sat there completely stunned and shocked sitting next to me. And I looked at him. I was like, did, did you, because he was young. I was like, did, did you see that? And he just stared at it and goes, yeah, and he panicked, and he just jumped up and ran out of the room. So I wanted to tell my husband, I was like, oh my God, you're not going to believe what just happened. And so I told him, so we started thinking about that, wondering what, it went, it, that button went in and out about 10 times as the TV went on and off, and I, I was kind of in shock by then. I was like, what the hell is going on here? So... We didn't know what to think. We were like questioning our sanity for a little while there. Uh, then, you know, we went about our life as usual. I mean, you, you kind of get to where you feel like, wh I don't know how to explain it, but you, it's like part of your brain accepts it, part of it doesn't, but you've got to go on with your day and your night. So life went on. Well, then, um, you know, little odd things would happen. One night we woke up because we heard what we thought, we thought one of the kids was, was in the kitchen. We heard like pots and pans and, you know, cabinets opening. We thought, what the heck are one of the kids doing up? It was like one in the morning. So my husband jumps up thinking, oh, you know, those kids. He walks in there, he comes back, he says, oh my God, there's nobody in that kitchen. The kids are sound asleep. And I was like, no way, I, I, we both heard it. And he says, I know we both heard it. So, um, we lay there again thinking, what is going on? And then again, as we lay there, we heard what sounded like shuffling of feet. So he hopped up instantly, flew into the kitchen, which was very close to the bedroom. No, no one was in there. The kids were all in bed, sound asleep. So we thought, all right, we couldn't place, you know, we couldn't, it was hard to comprehend what was occurring so quickly after we moved in. Well then, a few nights later, um, after we were all settled, uh, one of our sons was taking a shower that night. All of a sudden, we hear him scream, bloody murder, just screaming, Mom, Dad! So we go running into the bathroom, and he has the shower curtain wrapped around his body in the shower, like this, with just his head peeking out. And I was like, what in the world is wrong with you? I was like, what's the matter? You know, we were, we were just like, what's wrong with you? And he sits there, he stands there with the curtain wrapped around him, pointing towards the wall in the bathroom. He goes, that little girl, that little girl, look at her. So we're looking at each other like, our son is losing his mind. So we, you know, we look at the wall and we're like, there's nothing there. He goes, how can you not see her? There's a little girl. And he was shaking. I mean, he was about pale and was shaking. And I thought, oh my God, my kid's losing it. You know, he's losing it. Well, we got through that situation. Then uh, he gets out of the shower. Go, you know, he didn't want to go to bed, so we had all, we had the lights in the closet on, a little light in the bedroom on, um, and stayed with him till he fell asleep. Well, then we're already in bed, you know, asleep. We hear him yelling again, so we go running into the room. He's laying there under the blankets with just his eyes peeking out, and he goes. Mom, Dad, look at her, look at her. So we're like, we don't see anything, honey. What's the matter? He was that old lady right there in the, you know, he was like in the, in the rock, rock, rocking chair. And I was like, oh my God, my child's losing it. 
And he's, I, I calmly said, okay, honey, describe her to me. And he goes, well, she's got long gray hair. It's in a braid down her back. And she's got on this white kind of dress, long dress. And she's just sitting in the rocking chair smiling at me. And so I was like, oh, my goodness, what's happening here, you know? Well, um, just to give you a, 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 a whatever on that, my son is now 20, he's in his late 20s. He still has to sleep with a light on of how this whole ordeal in this house affected him. He still has to sleep with a light on. My other son absolutely cannot tolerate anything to do with supernatural. It, it gets him scared. Um, another incident in that household, um, we decided to have a sleepover with kids. So we had a bunch of kids over, little girls and boys, you know, coming to have a big sleepover. Well, we were woken up in the middle of the night by all the kids screaming. I mean screaming, like two in the morning, terrified. So we get up and we run out there, and they were, they were absolutely, these children were shaking. They were so scared and crying. And they were telling us that through the skylight, they said, we kept seeing them come through the skylight. They were floating around. They were just like shaking and crying, terrified. We, at, we had to call their parents at that hour to come and get them. They wanted out of the house so badly. Well, after that incident, the ki none of the neighborhood kids would come back into our house. We, we were like, we can't believe this is happening. Um, we had incidences of hearing sounds, of hearing our names called out. It was terrifying after a while. Um, we couldn't afford to move at the time. You know, we had five kids. We were struggling. We couldn't afford to stop and move again. Well, we kept hearing these little things occurring and seeing things that seemed unusual. Uh, like we would place something somewhere and then we'd find it somewhere else. Like, well, how did that happen when nobody else was home? You know, kids were home. Um, we kept hearing, um, like, footsteps. We kept hearing, at some point, my husband would hear his, my then husband would hear his name called out. I would hear my name whispered. It was pretty weird, pretty scary. Um, and then one day we were sitting outside and one of the little neighbor kids came and she came up to us to talk to us and she says, my grandma and grandpa can't believe that you have stayed in this house so long. And we looked at her and we were like, what do you mean? And she said, nobody ever lasts here more than a month. And I said, why? And she goes, because don't you know the house is haunted? <laughs> and so I was like, no, I didn't know that. And she goes, yes, the house is haunted. Nobody ever stays in this house. My husband and I just looked at each other like, oh my God, us and our children, we're not losing our minds. We're, we're not. Um, so needless to say, we were not comfortable in that home. Uh, we eventually, you know, got, we got out of it fairly quickly after that. It, w it was a terrifying experience. Um, I, I know you people out there who have experienced things and you tell people, you know how it is, they look at you like, yeah, you're crazy. I understand. I know what it's like. Um, for instance, the home I'm in right now, it belongs uh, to the lady that I was a caregiver to. She died when she, uh, she was 90 years old. She just died in March. And I'm living in her home right now until they sell it. When I first moved in here in April, I am telling you what, <laughs> It was pretty terrifying because it's an 11 room house, so there's a lot of space. Uh, I'm in this bedroom. I, I have always gone to bed with my door locked at night because of an incident that happened long ago when I was young and somebody broke into my apartment and I, I wake to find this man standing right at my bedroom door. And thank God my neighbors, I was able to call them and they came, he jumped out the window. Who knows what he would have done to me, but I wake up to this man standing at my bedroom door. So from that point on, I remember the, the detective that talked to me said, never, 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 ever go to sleep with your bedroom doors unlocked because while you're sleeping, if somebody comes in, they have access to you instantly. So since then, that's back in the 70s, I sleep with my bedroom door locked. Um, so I'm in this room. I lock my door. Uh, again, I wake up one night because I thought, I thought somebody had broken in. I heard sounds in the kitchen. And I thought, oh my God, somebody has broken into this house. Because this house goes in a way that there's a long area around it. So I thought, oh my God, someone's broken into the house. Well, I grabbed my trusty hair dryer. <laughs> that was my weapon. 
closest by to me. I grabbed my hair dryer and I, I thought, I gotta do something here. So I slowly opened my bedroom door thinking, okay, and I've got my cell phone with me. And I walk out there, you know, I let my dog, my dogs run first. They ran out there immediately. And my dogs are the kind that if they see somebody that they don't know, they will, they will, they will, if they thought they were going to hurt me, these dogs would attack to hurt, to kill. They would, they may be little, but they will attack. They will not stand back. They ran out there, started sniffing everything, growling a little bit, but not acting as though there was a person there. So I thought, okay, they're sensing something. Anyway, I went to, con you know, check the kitchen, check the house. Well, there was nothing. So I thought, okay, I know what I heard. I know what I heard. Another night, I heard what sounded like shuffling, feet shuffling. And so I thought, oh my God, I'm hearing things again. Oh no. So then by chance, I was telling this, the woman that I cared for, her daughter. I was telling her daughter about the shuffling noise. And she said, well, guess what? Mama, when she used to walk, she would shuffle her feet. I didn't know that because when I was caring for her, she was very sick and weak, and so I never thought of anything about how she walked or anything. Um, but she said, yeah, she used to walk with a shuffle. And I was like, oh, my goodness. Well, then I started thinking maybe it's her. Who knows? I, I don't know. You know, I'm not going to sit here and say there was a ghost or there was. I, I don't know because I don't know. But I definitely heard the, the shuffling. And a few times after that, um, my dogs, for instance, before they took her furniture out, there was a chair that she always used to sit in. My dogs would run over to that chair, sit in front of it, and they would be sitting there wagging their tails, looking at the chair as if someone were sitting there. They'd be wagging their tails, and sometimes they'd even kind of put their paws up on the chair, wag their tails, and I thought, what the heck are they looking at? And then they would just walk away, like, 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 you know, when you give attention to a dog and then it just goes away. That's what these dogs did. And I thought, what are they looking at? They did this several times. So I thought, okay, it's not just me. There were times when uh, all of a sudden I'd hear them growl or bark and they'd run to the den where she, that's where her room had been set up, like a hospital room for her. They'd run to that room, stop, and they'd be looking all over the room. They'd be doing this. They'd be going like this all over and I thought okay there's no flies or bugs in the air what are they looking at then they start wagging their tail again so I know what it feels like when you feel like there's something around you when you feel there's a presence I know what you're talking about and I understand believe me um, it can be terrifying or it can be I try to look at it like I don't know what this experience is about, but it's happening. Um, I've heard I've heard sounds in this house. I've heard when I was caring for her. To give you an example, one day um, she uh, she looked at me and she goes, she was she had her hospital bed in there and she looked at me. And she goes, oh look at that little boy. And, you know, I'm thinking well dementia. You know, things set in. And I was like, what little boy, honey? And she goes, that one right there at the end of the bed with the dark hair and the, the hat and the, the dark jacket. And I was like, well, I don't see him. And she goes, he's right there. And um, I said, well, okay, you know. And I just kind of let it go, thinking, you know, her age, dementia, what have you. Then another day, um, I was sitting with her in the den, and I heard this noise in the other part of the house, a very odd uh I don't know how to explain it, a very weird noise in a room that's connected to the room she was in. There's like a window there. And I heard the noise and I thought, oh my God, what do I do? Do I grab this woman and run out with her? Do I grab something? What do I do? I, you know, I didn't know what to do. So I, I <laughs> grabbed a broom, which was close by, <laughs> and um, had it in my hand, looked in the room right behind her, her room, nothing again. So I thought, well, that's weird. And I told her, because she heard the noise too, and I said, I, d I don't know what that sound was. And she goes, well, that's okay. He's already gone. And I said, who's gone? And she said, he's gone. Don't worry about it. So that kind of made me like, well, what's going on here? So she would mention things that I, you know, I don't know if she really heard or saw or whatever, but it seemed pretty real. So um, 
I know that these things exist. Um, I don't know what to call them, spirits, ghosts. I, I don't know. I really don't. But I do know what I have heard. I do know what I've experienced. Um, uh, another time, um, there was an incident in where, and you guys know what I'm talking about, when you, when you get these feelings, when you get this sense of somebody, something is in the room with you, you know what I'm talking about. It's real. It's not... It's not someone's, you know, just their imagination. It is real. I have felt that. Um, there was one night in particular here when uh, I, I all of a sudden got the sense. I felt like there was somebody in that den. There was just someone there. And sure enough, my dogs go running in there, and they stop. And they sniff the air, and they look straight at her chair again. And this time, they all three circled around the chair. As it, picture her sitting in a chair and then them in front of it, all three of them. They sat there looking at the chair doing this. You know how dogs do when they're looking or hearing, looking at something weird or hearing something weird? My dogs were doing this. They were going like that, looking straight at the chair. And I thought, what are they doing? What are they looking at? And then after a while, they stopped what wagged their tails and took off again so i knew okay it wasn't just me sensing something um the things that i have experienced in life from you know quite a long time ago tells me that there is something and i don't know what it is but there is something going on besides what we are aware of what we know i should say um i had another experience at that haunted house where I had picked up my son from kindergarten. He was five. We, it was the middle of the day, you know, 12, 30 or so. Um, I picked him up. I decided to get him McDonald's as a treat because he did well in school. And we got home. Okay, now you got a picture walking up from a sidewalk up this, this long uh, sidewalk, curving sidewalk up to the front door over here, okay? We'll say for you to look at the doors over here on the right for you. And um, you had to walk this long path. And on this side was one part of the house where the door was. So there's this long part here. On this side is another long part. So it's kind of like an L-shaped thing, right? So um, to get to the door or to leave the house, you either go down this long sidewalk or you have to go across the huge lawn that there was. Either way, okay? Well, we get in, you know, we get the McDonald's, we get home, we go in, and they, I had a table set up. Right as you enter the door, there was this kind of a table, because the kitchen was kind of right there. And so um, I set the McDonald's down, my son sits at the end of the table, all of a sudden I see a shadow, and I look towards the door, and I realize there's a man standing there. I thought, oh my God, I knew I hadn't locked the screen door, I just walked in with the McDonald's and my son, and he's sitting at the table. So I instantly ran to the door, of course, and locked the screen real fast, the screen door. And I looked at him, and I was like, can I help you? And the thing that was so weird about this was this guy's eyes. First of all, I thought, where did he come from? There were no other cars there. Where did he walk up from? His eyes were the strangest blue I had ever seen. They, all, they were almost like a fluorescent blue. I could not get my eyes off of him. He had kind of long, like maybe to the shoulder length, wavy brown hair. And these eyes were huge and blue, like a blue I've never seen, which that in itself, I was just like mesmerized, staring at him. And so again, I said, can I help you? And he just goes, um, no, uh, I, I just wanted to, uh, I wanted to see if you were interested in that he had this little paper with him or something and I was like no I'm not interested thank you and he looks at me and he goes that's all right no problem and uh, he goes you have a good day he says have a wonderful day so I just kind of looked at him and I closed the door right away well right next to the door there was there was a window right there there's here's the door there's a window on the wall connected to the door and then a went and then a set of windows right next to those windows 
So the second you look out the window, you can see whoever was leaving the house. Well, as soon as I shut that door, I peeked over to the window. I couldn't see him. I thought, where, where did this man go to? He couldn't have gone to the left without me seeing him because he had to walk the length of the house. He couldn't have gone to the right without my seeing him because he would have to walk the length of the lawn. I was stunned. I thought, where did this man go to? He just kind of like vanished right from the front door after I closed it. So after that moment, I sat there with my son, and my son looked at me, and he goes, oh, that's okay, Mom. He, he was a good person. And I thought, how does this five-year-old know that? But he said that, smiled, and went out to eat in McDonald's. Um, so I'm telling you these stories because I know there are people out there who experience these things and, and you tell someone and they just act like you're crazy. You're not. I know what you're, you're going through. I'll give you another quick example. My son, my oldest child, who is now 38, um, when he was five, I was a single mom at the time and we were living in a one bedroom apartment and he was, uh, he was little. He was probably about three years old. And I couldn't afford anything but a one bedroom at the time. So I had his bed on that side, my bed on this side. One night I wake up in the middle of the night to him talking. He was sitting on the edge of the bed talking. I mean, sitting upright like I am to you. And I was like, what are you, what are you doing? And he goes, I'm talking to him. And I said, who? And he goes, to the to this man and I said what man I said what, what does he look like and he says he has red curly hair a black hat and he's got on a black jacket and he's smiling and talking to me and I got terrified I looked at him and I said really and he goes yeah he's right there mom and my son was wide awake looking at me and I calmly said honey tell whoever that is to go away and he goes why he's very nice and I said because I don't want him here. So my son proceeded to talk and goes, my mom says you need to go away now. So then all of a sudden he goes, he's gone now. And so I sat there and talked with my son. He goes, he's nice, mom. And he goes, but I was kind of scared. And I said, well, yeah, I, w I would be too. So this happened a few times with that my son, my oldest one. And I have had these sort of things happen you know, in my life, um, in different homes, apartments, what have you, I have had things occur that were very scary and unusual and made me wonder what was going on. So I tell you these stories because I understand um, it can be spooky, it can be scary um, when things occur that you can't, that you can't quite explain, that you don't know what, what it was really all about. And I do understand that. So. Um, if these things occur, you know, and you genuinely see things, unusual things, hear unusual things, not everybody's going to think you're crazy. I certainly don't because I know what I've experienced. Um, <clears throat> it wasn't that long ago, just a few weeks ago, that I was in the den and I instantly felt like in the, the den that was her room. Again, I felt, I felt someone in there. I could feel it. I, I don't know how to explain it, but I could feel I mean, I was on the computer, my mind completely occupied on stuff on the computer. So it's not like I was sitting there thinking about stuff. I was just occupied looking at stuff on the computer. And all of a sudden I actually had to look up. Cause I, you know that feeling when you feel like someone's staring at you and you look and they're looking at you? That's the feeling it was. I felt like someone was staring at me and I had to look around the room. And sure enough, my little dogs, especially this one right here, he sat up his ears twitching and turning as he tilted his head. I felt it. I could feel her. I could actually feel her. I could feel her presence. And one night I could smell her. I mean, I bathed, bathed this woman. I dressed this woman. I took care of this woman, uh, almost like a child, you know, at 90 years old. I smelled her. I could smell her in that room. It was odd. It was like, it just kind of filled the room. And I just sort of sat and talked to her. And if you saw my other video with the cross, um, that cross appeared after I talked to her. Uh, okay, after I talked to her that night, in particular, I was having kind of a rough time with the, with 
a lot of things going on in my life. I was just kind of, you know, when you have that time mentally where you're kind of like, oh, I'm frustrated with everything. I was outside literally talking to her, just telling her my woes and worries and kind of angry at whatever is out there. You know, I, I'm still on the fence about God and universe. And <laughs> I don't know. It's hard for me because of the things that have happened in my life that have been so hard. But I was talking to her, and I was like, you know, I don't understand. You know, just venting. And all of a sudden, this cross, which is in my other one of my videos that I just made a few days ago, uh, this cross appeared in the sky. And I'm telling you people, it blew my mind to watch this thing like somebody got a paintbrush, went this way, then got a paintbrush and went that way. And there was this cross. There were no planes. There was nothing. I watched this thing form in front of my eyes, and I knew if I didn't capture it, I never would have captured it had it not been for my grandson yelling for me because he couldn't get SpongeBob on the computer. When he yelled for me, I, you know, it, it broke my, I was like paralyzed watching this thing in the sky. So then I find out from her daughter that when people were upset or sick or whatever, she would make the sign of the cross on their foreheads and tell them not to worry. I didn't know that about the woman I took care of. So that kind of freaked me out when her daughter told me that because after I talked to this woman who has passed on, all of a sudden this, cl this cross appears in the sky. So that's got me questioning a lot about my views of faith now. I'm, I'm kind of feeling like maybe there is something to all of this stuff. Uh, if you look at that, go back and look at that video about the cross, you'll see what I'm talking about. That thing stayed there for a very long time. As the clouds and everything dissipated and disappeared and moved, that stayed there. And I'm still, to this day, this happened just, you know, a couple days ago. Um, I'm still kind of in awe. I'm still, I have to go back and look at that picture and tell myself, did I really see, see this? If I wouldn't have done that, I, I would think I was, had gone crazy for a little while there. Um, but I look at that picture, and I'm starting to think, what caused it? What created it? How did this happen? That is not clouds. That is not cloud formations. Clouds don't make perfectly straight lines like that. They just don't. And they don't just stay there while the rest of the clouds move. So I know what I saw. I got it. I got a picture of it. So, guys, I, I'm making this video because um, I know there are so many things in this world that go on that we don't understand and we can't understand. We'll never have the answers to everything. It's just not possible. But if you're watching this and maybe you've just experienced something, maybe you heard something or saw something unusual, you know, not everybody thinks you're a whack job, you know, not everyone does. I understand because the things that, that have occurred here and, and other places in my life, um, I know there's something beyond what we know, beyond what we, uh, what we think uh, we know. <laughs> um, and they can be frightening. They can be very frightening. But what I do is I just, I just look at it like if I'm actually frightened, uh, I just say, whatever you are, go away. I, I, I can't handle you at this point. I just, I just say that. Go away. Please go away. Um, and it, it brings me a little comfort to just feel that I'm in power and control to say go away. So, uh, you know, don't feel, don't feel that you're weird or unusual or strange. Things do occur. And these little guys here, I'm telling you, when I see them hop up out of nowhere and go into a room and stare at a chair as if they're listening to somebody talk to them, I, I know it's not just me. It's a very unusual thing. So guys, if you have spooky things happen in your life and you have unusual things, scary things, um, talk to somebody about it. Let them know. Uh, I've heard of stories where people say things have actually moved and uh, you know flown across the room, that type of thing. Well, of course, if I've never had something fly across the room. Now, like I said, I saw the lamp move up and down. That was pretty terrifying. Um, but if you do see something to that extent, of course, I, you know, talk to somebody. I, I don't, I don't know. Can spirits, ghosts, if they exist as we think they do, 
can they hurt you? I don't know. Um, but you hear stories from people who say they do. So um, talk to somebody. But um, I say I just wanted to make this video because I, I know that so many unusual things happen in life and we, we just don't always have the answers, guys. I mean, life is a pretty big mystery, you know? It's a really big mystery. And um, uh, I know that the things I've had experienced I, I'm not a doubter that there is something out there. There's something beyond this physical life and world that we see. There's there's something else. Um, I don't know what it is. Uh, people call it ghosts. People call it spirits. People call it all kinds.